What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and if you guys already know it's Wednesday so that means it's Real Talk Wednesday. So before we even get into this video I'm pretty sure you guys are like what's up with the braids? When did you get braids? If you haven't seen my newest video or one of my latest videos this is actually the Senegalese twist braid wig. So yes I did a video on this wig and I've had it on for like five days now. I haven't removed it because I had my own hair twisted in the front to act like I really went and got it braided. So what you want to do if you get any of those braid wigs, untwist the very first row in the wig and braid your hair into it. So that way it looks like it's actual braids and not a wig, a Bob Marley wig sitting on top of your head piece. Yes, on your dome. So that's up with this wig. I love it. You can get it from sisterwigs.com. And I'll post the video and the link for you guys for that below. And you can save 10% if you use code MUFFIN. So other than that, there's really not much going on with my life. You know, it is day-to-day -day life. And yeah, so let's get... Oh, and if you guys want a Real Talk episode featuring your life situation, you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And please put in the subject line real talk and also if you want to change the name of your character yourself in the video for the video purposes Please go ahead and let me know that in the video So that way I don't have to sit here and think for like ever of what I'm gonna call you guys for this video So let's begin Before I start, I must say that I love your videos and I have changed my name in advance. My name is Rose and I'm 17, about to turn 18. I just found out I am pregnant and I'm scared. I have been with my boyfriend for about two years now and everything's going great. My boyfriend has already graduated high school and has a job at the local grocery store while he awaits to ship off to Marine Boot Camp. I, however, have, have not graduated yet. I don't graduate until May. We are both afraid to tell our parents about my pregnancy because our family really hates each other. I am afraid to tell my mom because she always told me that if I got pregnant, she would kick me out of the house because she isn't having any crying babies in her home. She says this to me, but my older brother, who is 23, disrespectful as he is and has no job is about to move his pregnant girlfriend in our home. I told my mom that if I ever did get pregnant that it's not fair that my brother can have his baby here but I can't have mine. I know that if my mom kicks me out I can't go to my boyfriend's house because his family hates that I'm half black. He and his family are white by the way. So what should I do? I'm scared. How should I tell my mom? What will I do if she kicks me out? I don't want to have an abortion but I'm afraid that's my only choice. Thanks for your advice, Rose. So Rose is 17, about to turn 18. She's been with a young man who is white. She's half biracial. She's half black and half white. And she is pregnant. And she's scared to tell her mom because she's afraid her mother will kick her out. However, Rose's brother, who's 23, is about to move his pregnant girlfriend into their home. And her brother has no job and is disrespectful. So she's scared and she doesn't know what to do. So Rose, I got a situation for you. I got a scenario for you. So when I was 16, I was dating this guy named Freddie. And we were in high school together. We were really close. We were boyfriend and girlfriend for a long time. I was a cheerleader. And yes, I was a cheerleader back then. And he was on the football team. Um... <laughs> That's, that's high school shit, you know. But, you know, I actually became pregnant when I was 16. And I actually went behind my mom's back and went and got an abortion at, um, gosh, what is it called? Oh, it wasn't called Planned Parenthood because um, they didn't have Planned Parenthood back then. But it was another place. Um, and actually, I took my mom's Medicaid card because back then they were huge, big plastic cards. And they had not just one person's name on it, but they had everyone's name on it in the household that was on Medicaid. So I took her card and me and my boyfriend went to the clinic and I got an abortion. Um, and it was like a really horrible experience because I had nightmares for a while about this. And my mom later on found out about it because she read my diary. 
And she came to me and said, you know, I could have told her, I should have told her, and I could have told her, I could tell her anything, and she would have helped me in the situation, she would have helped me take care of it. However, the reason why I didn't tell her is because I'll never forget, and she said this many, many times when I was around 16 and 15, I better not ever bring any mud puppies, mud puppies into her house. She is not allowing any mud puppies into her house. Me and my little mud puppy could not stay in her home. So that's kind of what scare me away by her telling me that I couldn't stay in her home with my mud puppies and I'm that's like a really mean thing to call an unborn child a mud puppy but this is this is how my mom said it to me she called me she called it a mud puppy so of course me being scared I went behind her back and got an abortion um and then she found out probably like a month or two after the fact and then she approached me and told me I could have told her and she would have helped me with the situation and she would have helped me take care of the baby I think a lot of times we as parents say a lot of things to our kids just to scare them and sometimes it's a good tactic and sometimes it's not really a good tactic because when you tell your kids certain things you say certain things to them and you kind of like threaten them or just give them harsh negative feedback it kind of scares them away from being able to open up and talk to you about just anything. I would love for my kids to be able to come to me and talk to me about anything because I'm their parent and I'm the one that can help them the most opposed to them going somewhere behind our backs or my back, doing something behind my back like I did, you know what I mean? I don't regret my decision that I went and did that at 16 because I really didn't need a baby, but I really wish I could have been able to talk to my mom. She was always one that said, oh, you can talk to me about anything, you can talk to me about anything. However, she was so strict in her ways and she was so harsh and blunt with her words, like cut like a knife sometimes. It, was, it made it really difficult for me to be able to come and talk to her. But I think as women, we say certain things to our daughters and even sometimes to our sons, but we say them a lot to our daughters to kind of like scare them into not being like how we were or how like society is. And even though we don't mean any harmful intentions on it and we want to be there for you guys, we still try to use like harmful tactics and harmful ways and just going about certain ways in certain ways um sometimes it's hard for parents to say things to you like we don't want to say things like oh yeah if you get pregnant i'll help you take care of the baby that is kind of like telling you if you get pregnant like okay it's going to be okay it's kind of like consenting like okay it'll be okay if you have a baby at this age i'll help you that's kind of to me like a consent so if it were me yeah i would say the same thing like better not bring no damn babies in my house at such and such age because i ain't helping you take care of them yeah that's what i would say too because i don't want my daughter to end up pregnant at 16 either or 17 either so this is what i would say to my kid too even though damn well i know damn well that if that were my kid i'm gonna help in the situation. My daughter, she was pregnant at 18. She had her baby when she was 19. Did I really want her to get pregnant at 18? No, I really didn't. I had high hopes for her and high standards for her and I still do. But, you know, when she told me she was pregnant, of course I'm going to support her and I'm going to help her and I'm going to be there for her because that's what we do as parents. But we do say a lot of harmful things that kind of like scare our kids away and make them feel like, oh wow, she's going to kick me out or she's not going to deal with me, or she's not going to love me the same anymore because I've had these mud puppies, and or this mud puppy, or this baby, or this crying baby. She's going to disown me. Rose, your mother's really not going to throw you out, but what she did tell you was something for your own good, and the way she said it was something for your own good. She may not have said it to you the way you might not have wanted to hear it. You may have wanted to hear it. However, she did say it to you as a scare tactic to keep you from getting pregnant. To help you further on your journey in life, your journey in life, and just to keep you as a child still, because you are still a child. However, I really don't foresee her kicking you and your baby out of the home. That was a scare tactic. And however, it really didn't work. So the best alternative for this situation is to speak to your mom. You really don't want to go behind her back and get an abortion, even though you can, because Planned Parenthood does allow that. But it's always good to confide in a family member, especially if it's your mom. You both are females, and I'm pretty sure you want her to be there for you as much as she wants you to be there for her for any type of scenario. So in my eyes, it's from what I see from what my mom did and from what I did, I really don't feel like she's going to kick you out. But we do say things to keep our children in place. And to keep them sane and to keep them going with what they need to go on in with life. However, sometimes it just doesn't come out the right way. I say a lot of things to my kids that don't come out the right way. 
but it's not like I mean harm to them, but I'm trying to be straightforward and let them know, listen, this is how life is, and this is how it's going to be. If you don't do your goddamn schoolwork, you're going to be a fucking hamburger flipper. And I say shit like that to them. I mean it, but I'm trying to give them a reality check, like, listen, do your schoolwork. Because if you don't do your schoolwork, you ain't going to be shit. You ain't going to accomplish shit in life. And sometimes when you say shit harsh or hard, it hits a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to give hard criticism. Criticism, excuse me. You have to give hard criticism to people so that they understand. Sometimes when you're so soft-spoken to people and you're just nice about it. Oh, well, if you get pregnant, Rose, I'll help you out. That shit is like, that's a consent. Like, yeah, go have a baby. It's kind of like a consent. It's like you have no parent authority over the child. So, yeah, if that were me, I would have said the same damn thing to you because I don't expect my kids as teenagers to have kids. If they do, I'm going to support them morally, but I'm still going to be on their ass about what they need to do in life. However, I really don't foresee her kicking you out. But this is how she felt, and this was her scare tactic to make sure that you stay on your two feet and you stay grounded. However, you did slip up, and as far as your boyfriend's family not liking you because you're half and half... I'm sorry about that, and I wonder how they're going to feel about their grandchild being born. Maybe they won't feel that way. Maybe they'll take a liking to you. And it's sad because, to me, that seems like a racist type of situation that you're going through right here. With his family not liking your family and not liking you because you're half black and half white. That, to me, seems like a whole different situation in its own. And I'm going to tell you this much. My kids are not biracial, but I am. And I will be honest and tell you. My kids, my daughters, they're my ex-husband's mother, they don't like me. They don't they don't tend to my kids. They don't ask about them and I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not pushing my kids on them. I'm not having my kids call and ask them how they doing. They don't call and ask me how I'm doing or my kids do. You know what I'm saying? If they don't like you, then they don't like you. You don't gotta kiss nobody's ass to love or like your baby or you at all. As long as you and your boyfriend have a strong relationship and you guys are grounded and you guys are doing what you need to do, then I would say continue getting your education and graduate. But I would say to open up to your mom and have a real well-rounded sit-down chat with your mom um i wouldn't say involve your boyfriend in it right away he will be involved in it trust and believe but to kick off the conversation and to start the conversation about you being pregnant i would go to my mom as a young lady and be real with her and let her know i'm pretty sure she would respect you more if you was to come to her opposed to going behind her back so in my eyes no i really don't feel like she's going to put you out and you know there's probably like a 10 percent chance of her putting you out however if she does what you will need to do is you'll need to go seek social services and county help they'll help you because you are of age and you do have a child you know what I mean? You need to go and talk to your mom. You seriously need to go and talk to your mom because you're pregnant. You need to go get nu nutrients for you and your baby. You need to go get prenatal vitamins. You need to get checked out. You need to make sure you and your unborn are fine and safe. So don't keep this from your mom for too much longer. But I understand your fear because, man, listen, I was scared to tell my mom too. And I so happened just to go ahead behind her back and get it done. And when she came to me after she found out, she was like so pleasantly about, just so pleasant about the whole conversation. And I wish I would have known that from the jump, but the words that she used towards me, like she said this on many occasions, several occasions, towards me about mud puppies and not bringing them here, it made me feel a little nervous and scared too. Like, hey, I need a place to stay. I am not about to get kicked out with no baby. So let me go ahead and take care and handle my business. Now, when I got pregnant again, a year and a half later, I didn't even tell my mom. I had my stepmom tell my mom because I wasn't even living in New York State anymore. I was in Pennsylvania with my dad. So my mom and my dad actually, my mom and my step, my stepmom and my dad actually told my mother for me. And my mother was like, she wasn't too thrilled about the idea, but she wasn't about to leave me in Pennsylvania. And she sent back home for me. She said to send my baby home so I can take care and take care of her and my grandson. Or my grandchild, rather. So, and she was so excited about it. As time went on, my mom was excited about it. More excited than I was. And she was so helpful. So, we do say a lot of mean things and a lot of harsh things that can strike you like a knife. However, it's not intended for you to feel fear. It's only a scare tactic so that you can fear what's out there in the real world if you don't do right. 
So, Rose, take it from me and talk to your mom because we do say things out of anger and just because we want to make sure that you are right in life. And sometimes those scare tactics do work because it got your ass scared and it had me scared too. So, my strong advice would be to talk to your mom. So, divas and divos, let Rose know what you think about this situation. Would you talk to your mom about it? What would you do? What would you tell her? So, the next one. Okay, um, this is a good one. And when I was reading this one, I was like, are you serious? Is she serious? Is this a real fucking email? But, hopefully it's real because I don't, yeah, hopefully it's real because I don't really want to be like on some bullshit. So, hi April, call me Candy for the purpose of the video. I'm a long time follower, supporter, forwarder, etc. I'll just say that when I started watching your YouTube videos years ago, I realized, oh, this is not the one, excuse me, but I will get onto that. I realized, um, so this is not the, video, the, the email that I was talking about, but I'll get onto that after that. I realized, and you helped me to remember that I had forgotten to take care of myself and as a person. I mean that I was a career, marriage, and family driven. I was so busy taking care of everyone else that I forgot to take care of myself. I looked at myself in the mirror one day and didn't recognize myself. I've been wearing weaves and wigs since the late 80s, but I wasn't a makeup girl. After watching your videos, I went to the Mac counter and after that it was all over. I say all of this um I say all of that to say that some years ago, me and my husband was about to leave out one evening and he said, "Wow, you are taking forever. When did you become so vain? I didn't know what to say. I didn't realize that I was actually taking up his time by taking care of myself. This has spilled over to other things. He used to cook clean and he was always there to take care of my daughter, his stepdaughter, and my son that he and I have together. Then somewhere around that time, one day he just stopped. Now all he does is stare that at the damn computer. Since this started, I've had one foot out the door. I'm thankful for our family home and things we have, but I'm willing to walk away from it. We could do better than our living conditions, and his complacent, complacent behavior has kept us here for 10 years too many. I've made arrangements to leave by November. I love my husband with all my heart, but I've let some of the needs of myself, family, and my career slip because slip because I've become so busy taking and attending to him and being Sally Homemaker on the weekends. Am I wrong to leave what most women would call a great husband because he is an excellent provider? I mean, if it were not for him, I would not be able to afford most of the things that I enjoy out of life. But I'm also willing to get myself to leave to get myself, family, and career back on track. Because if I'm not careful, I will spend my whole week, Saturday and Sunday, tending to his needs. There's no me time. I hate to sound selfish, but I'm not sure what else to do. All right, Candy. Well, Candy is basically upset with life. Not even upset with life, but upset with her damn self because all these years she's been tending to her husband, her family, being Sally Homemaker, putting her career and herself on hold for everybody else in her family. And now she's ready to walk out the door because all her husband does is sit in front of that computer. He doesn't cook. He doesn't attend to... um. He doesn't tend to his his kids. He doesn't tend to his family. And she's ready to leave. Hmm. And this is selfish because she says that she can't afford basically half the stuff that he does for her. But she wants to get her life on track. Here's the thing, Candy. I'm not saying that you're being selfish. But you've never mentioned to me once in this email that your husband is abusive, mentally or physically a cheater, a liar, a thief. You've never mentioned any of those things. The only thing that you've mentioned is the fact that he sits in front of the computer. Yeah, it's great that you have gotten yourself together and want to wear makeup. That's a good thing because I love me some makeup. Um, that's not a good thing. But if that's what you like to do to make yourself feel good, then don't stop that for nobody. If this is what you like to do and this is how you feel and how it makes you feel as a person, then continue on. But... What's the sole purpose? What's the sole purpose of leaving him? Because he's sitting in front of the computer or is it because you feel like you don't want to tend to him all the time? Here's the thing, Candy. I'm not going to promote leaving your family because that's your kid's father and that's their family. And sometimes 
we, our needs do have to be put on a back burner, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, to make our family work. Now, if there's certain things that your husband is doing, like sitting in front of the computer all the time, and you don't agree to that, then why don't you step to your husband as a lady, ladylike, and talk to him about it instead of deciding to leave already. Leaving is not going to make the situation any better. Do you think that when you leave, you can just come back just like that because you went and got your career in motion and you got your self-emotion? You you can do all those things at home with the support of your family and with the support of your husband. If you can't afford half the shit he's doing now, what makes you think that you're going to be able to afford anything on your own? And you ain't even got your career intact? Girl, please. Okay? Here's the thing. And I'm not trying to be bitchy and I'm not trying to be on his side or your side. I'm just seeing it as it is. You have a good man and you even said that he is a provider. You've never once in this email blatantly said he's a... Uh, a cheater, a liar, a bail pig, abuser, mentally, physically, verbally. You've never said any of that in this email. We've only complained about the fact that you have to be Susie Homemaker and tend to his needs on the weekends. You know what? Maybe you guys should tend to each other's needs on the weekends instead of just you doing everything. Maybe you should have a talk with your husband instead of just kicking your broomstick out the door and flying off on it before it's too late. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to find a really good man. However, I'm not there. I'm not a fly on the wall. I can't really see what's going on, but I'm just reading from what you told me. A career is a beautiful thing. It's a blessing. And sometimes a career is when you guys work together. Sometimes you can't do it all on your own. A lot of times you can't do it on your own. You look at all of these people out there in the world. A lot of them didn't get to where they got and where they're at on their own. They had someone's help someone's love, someone's moral support, okay? We can't always do everything on our own. So I would not put my foot in my mouth too soon and walk out that door just like that because you feel like, oh, he's not giving you any attention. I've had times in my past relationship with my ex-husband where he hasn't really given me that much attention because he's running the streets, selling drugs, doing dumb shit like that. And it's really gotten to me, you know what I mean? And I stopped whining about it because what the hell, it seems like I'm whining about shit and you're not even really doing anything. But I did not leave. I wish I did leave. However, me and your situation is totally different. He's an alcoholic and an asshole. Your husband is a provider and he works and he's on the computer. What is he looking at on the computer? Because I want to know if it's job related or is it some porn sites or some dating sites. What is it? If it's some shit that's negative, then by all means, <laughs> you need to put your foot down. However, if it's work related, then that means that he's trying to provide for you and your family and make sure that you guys are all right. And if you need to feel like you have, you need more attention, then you need to have a sit down with him and talk to him and let him know, hey, Josh, this is how I'm feeling. This is how you making me feel. And this is how it's making me want to leave. Okay. I'm not going to say leave because November is right around the corner. Would you like it candy if he decided he wanted to up and leave you because you started wearing makeup and he feels like you're vain would you like that if he just left that would be selfish of him so yeah to me you are somewhat being a little bit selfish because you want a career but you want to do it without him and he has a career and he's done it with you so why not be able to work on it and do it together now if you would have said he was negative he was abusive excuse me, or anything like that, then I would be all for, like, leave his fucking ass, leave him alone. However, you didn't give me any of that type of information, so right now what I'm thinking is, you're just mad, you're just mad and upset about the situation with your husband and how he's been acting, and you want some kind of remorse or you want to feel good about what you're doing but in the long run you're not going to feel good if you leave him you're going to realize how much you miss him and how much you miss tending to his needs okay sometimes we take for granted a lot of things and i'm not just saying you it could be him as well he could be taking for granted that you're doing a lot of the housework and he's not chipping in you need to step up and be a woman and tell him that you could be taking for granted that he's working so hard to take care of your family not paying you attention and you're taking that for granted you guys need to have a, a good time, a quiet time, out to dinner time, which is you and him, and have a good conversation. Because leaving is not going to justify any of this, like with your career and not being Susie Homemaker. It's not going to make it any better. It's going to make your situation worse. And if he's a good man, like you said, why would you leave him? 
The next bitch would be happy to snatch his ass the fuck up in a heartbeat and flaunt him in your face. Girl, please, you better keep that man and have a nice chit-chat at dinner time with him and let him know how you've been feeling. But don't just be so eager to get up and run and fly off the door handle and be out the door like, kiss me where the sun don't shine. I'm going to get on my broomstick and fly off in the sky. Like, please, don't do that. It's nice to find a man at work and provide for his family because there are few of them, okay? Not trying to knock you men down, but however, there are some that there's not a lot of them out there. So, for those of you who have them, make sure that you keep them. However, if they're an asshole, and an asshole can come in many shapes and forms, and when an asshole, I mean cheating, lying, stealing, whatever you want to call it, then maybe you should reevaluate the situation. But for you, Kenzie, mm -hmm. get your sweets out and talk to your man. Because running away from a situation is not worth it. He's not paying you attention, but are you paying him attention? And in the weekends, okay, sometimes we got to do shit on the weekends that we don't want to do. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to run away from the situation. You need help in the home, you need to go to your husband and talk to him about that. You need to have a situation, a sit down, excuse me, not a situation. You guys need to have a sit down where you guys can communicate and basically talk to one another about how you feel and what's making the other person feel one type of certain type of way but just not run off like for real no so let candy know what would you do in her situation would you leave because you want to go get your career in order and because you're tired of being Susie homemaker but you got a nice ass good providing man at home or maybe we need a little bit more info either way I wouldn't just run off just like that so here is the one where I was like, what? What is this? Is this, are you serious with this email? So I'm going to just get into it because I got to go get my kids from school. You can call me Brooklyn. My boyfriend and I have been together for a little over five years now. Our relationship has been everything but good. He was very abusive physically, mentally, and emotionally. I have a mental illness and I am on disability income for it. Throughout our relationship, I attempted suicide multiple times, one of which nearly killed me. He never came to visit me in the hospital any of those times, even when I was in a coma for four days. I was a cutter, meaning she cut herself. He treated my illness like a joke. He's stolen from me and he has taken money from me, even though I didn't receive much SSI money. He ran the streets all the time selling drugs, so he had money, but he called himself punishing me for different things by taking my money. He crashed my car, a car I worked hard to buy for myself. He treated me like a whore and would do anything to humiliate me. He was also cheating on me with multiple women. I cheated too, but more emotionally than physically because my relationship was lacking the support and respect I needed to get by. For some reason, I did fall in love with him. I was always there for him when he needed me. He was snorting dope. He was snorting dope, which was the which which made the abuse worse. When he was sober, he was great, but his sober days were were short lived. Fast forward to 14 months ago, he got locked up. He has 16 months to go. I've been by his side this whole time. He supposedly made all these changes. He does treat me better and is more understanding of my illness. He swears I have nothing but good things coming my way when he gets out because of my loyalty, because his family has money, but they hate me. So I don't know how that will work out. He also plans to open up a business because his family will give him the startup money. He promises to go to counseling and drug treatment. He does still put pressure on me to fulfill goals before he gets out. I'm a writer and I want to have my own YouTube channel, but I'm doing the best I can. We're talking about having a child together, but I already have a son who is in the care of my older sister because mentally I can't take care of him. I want a chance to be the mother I couldn't be to, to him, and I think this will help. I can be right now. I think this will help, but right now I can barely take care of myself. I live with my parents because I don't have enough money to live on my own, and my illness is a daily struggle for me. Between finding the right medication and learning how to cope, life is just hard for me. He's made a lot of promises and even proposed, but he can still be a bit selfish at times. He doesn't ask me for money, just support. I'm struggling with this situation because I don't know if I should trust him. And I don't know if this situation is healthy for me, given my mental state. I really need your advice. Should I stand by a man that treated me like shit before he got locked up? Plus, I feel like no one else is going to deal with me and my situation. This man supposedly loves me and accepts me for who I am. Oh, yeah. To make it even worse, I also, <clears throat> to make it even worse, I also have herpes, which he has also come to accept. Who else wants to deal with that? What would I do? 
What do I do? P.S. You're such an inspiration to me. Teaching that I can do anything. That I can do anything. Oh, teaching me that I can do anything I put my mind to. And that being a plus size girl isn't a bad thing. Love you so much. So this is Brooklyn. So Brooklyn's situation is this. She's been with this guy for five years. He has been abusive mentally, verbally, physically. Stole her money. Crashed her cars. Is in jail now. Okay, he's got 16 more months to go promising her the fucking world and she's got a baby that her sister has um taken care of who's, who has the custody of and now she wants to have another baby with him and should she stay by her man okay brooklyn you have an illness okay i understand that you have an illness but is your other illness stupidity because I can't believe you wrote me this dumb shit and asked me and told me all about this situation about you and your man and you asking me should you stand by your man first of all you dumb ass and I'm saying this because I'm your friend that's why this is how I talk to my friends why the fuck would you think that he's gonna come out of jail and he's gonna be all kudos in your on your favor do you or do you not know that when they in jail, they will promise you the son if they can fucking give it to you? They will tell you they change. Yeah, obviously, because your ass is sitting behind bars 24-7. You ain't got shit else to do but change temporarily. And when your black ass or your white ass or your Chinese, Puerto Rican, Asian, or whatever you want to call it, race ass, gets the fuck out, you're going to act like a dumb ass, okay? Bottom line, you're going to be a dumb ass, Okay? And Brooklyn, do you want to be a dumb ass with him? Because it seems like you're kind of stupid right now. If you've been sitting around this long waiting for him to change. He stole your money. He steals your money. He cheats on you. He fucking verbally, mentally, physically abuses you. And you want to do what with him? Get married to him? And you want to have a baby with him. But you already have a kid that you don't even take care of. But you feel like having a baby is going to make you become a better mother. How about this, Brooklyn? How about you go and be a mother to your son that you already have? And stop worrying about some dude who don't even give a fuck about you. The reason why he give a fuck about you right now is because nobody gives a fuck about him because he's behind bars and ain't no other stupid ass bitch going to go and take care of him and go visit him and give him moral support because they see he's a true blooded jackass. Okay? Now here's the answer to your question. What should you do? Bitch, run for the motherfucking border and leave his ass the fuck alone. That's what you should do. Get your priorities in order the boo-boo you can barely take care of yourself you live at home you got this nigga stealing and crashing your cars and fucking beating on you and cheating on you what else could you possibly ask for in life okay do you not have any concern or do you not have any pride about yourself okay Pick up yourself. Lift yourself up. I don't give a fuck if I had AIDS or herpes, which I don't. However, that doesn't mean that because you have a disease means you have to be with just anybody that treats you like trash on the street because you got fucking herpes and you got an illness because you're a cutter. Bitch, please, okay? There are many other people out there in the world whose situations are way worse than yours and they got a good ass man standing by their side, not taking from them and using from you. You are what he's looking at as weak, weak, weak. And you know what? You being real stupid because you are allowing him to walk all over you. And right now, behind bars, boo, he's walking all over you. You don't really see it because you blind it right now because of all the good unbroken or uh, broken promises that he's telling you. Yes, they're broken promises because as soon as his ass hits the ground outside of the jail, those promises are going to be gone out the motherfucking door you gonna be like old news you still gonna be his girl because he you know what you already been there from day one down for him for whatever you've been down for whatever okay so of course you're gonna still be his chick because you down for whatever you're gonna take from whatever you're gonna deal with whatever with him but the next chick a real bitch that's gonna meet him they're not going to deal with his ass. So, yeah, he's telling you all of this shit now because he's in jail. Because, trust me, I've been there, done that, heard it all, boo. Heard it all. Yeah, I ain't drinking no more. Nigga, you can't drink because you in jail. They don't serve fucking shots and cocktails in motherfucking jail. They don't have happy hour in jail. So, right, you're not drinking right now. And, yeah, you changed a little bit because you have no choice. You're in jail. But as soon as he gets out... As soon as he gets out, what you think? It's going to be golden. He's going to be your best fucking friend. Girl, please. 
straighten up and fly right sweetheart because life is too fucking short and if you continue to be stupid you ain't gonna attract nothing but dumb stupid ass negroes and that's from the bottom line from my heart keep being stupid and keep thinking like oh this nigga's for real he gonna marry me we gonna do this and he got he gonna open up a business let me tell you something my ex-husband would tell me all types of shit when he was in jail and i would be like mm-hmm yep and that would be my response. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, you never believe nothing. You never believe nothing. You won't be... Because I don't believe shit, y'all. That's that jail talk. It's that jail talk, okay? They took a real good jail. Shit, if I was locked up and I had a nigga taking care of me, but I really wasn't feeling him, you best believe I'm going to tell him everything under the sun to make him feel like he is my most wanted, okay? And when I get out, nigga, Bob, please what? Yep, thanks for the packages and the commissary and the visits and the letters and the phone calls, but I got better things to do. And, sweetheart, that's how he going to feel about you he got better things to do read your email or listen to what the fuck i'm saying and listen to what the divas and devils is about to write to your ass girl please open up your eyes and stay at home and get your shit together okay fuck what you want to do about youtube it's not about youtube okay get your shit together in life in general and stop fucking cutting yourself all right because life is too short. You don't want to be scarred up. You don't want nobody putting you in no mental jacket because they feel like you're going crazy. And right now, I'm feeling like you're going crazy because you're so worried about this nigga. He ain't never been worried about you. You ain't nothing to him like that. You're not that important to him. He walks all over you and you still allow it. Let me tell you something. You might have herpes, so what? But I have a friend who has herpes. She was my, my friend, okay? And she had herpes. She has relationships with guys. You take your medication. It's not the end of the world because you have an STD. It's not the end of the world. Don't ever say like, oh, nobody's going to want you because you got this or that. That's how I would feel. Like nobody was going to want me because I got five kids and shit like that. This is how I would feel. And I stayed with that asshole of a husband of mine who was a drinker and would talk shit. And I had to fight him and stuff like that. I would feel like that. And I stayed too long. Okay, and it made me miserable and it made me so numb and bitter. Okay, so now that I moved on, I'm so fucking happy. There's somebody that wants me and there's somebody that wants you too. You just have not seen it yet because you haven't given an opportunity. And the first opportunity you need to give is yourself, meaning give yourself a chance. You need to grow and be a woman and stop depending on low lives. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to call anybody a lowlife, but the way he's treating you, he's the scum of the earth. So, sweetheart, do I feel, what I feel you should do? I feel like your ass need to run for the border like you was a Mexican trying to fucking get over to the United States, okay? Hmm. And on that note, let Brooklyn know what you would do in this situation. What do y'all think? Okay? And as always, um... I will see you guys on my next video. Stay diva and devolicious. And make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back soon.